In late June of 2022, Sweetwater Sound had my wife Kelly and I out for their annual Gear Fest, along with dozens of other content creators from the music industry. Now, Gear Fest was simultaneously held online for the public, with tons of live stream performances, online gear sales, huge giveaways, and much more. But for a lucky few of us, behind the scenes, we were invited to come spend a full week at the Sweetwater campus in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And what was waiting for us there was essentially a very private, intimate version of a NAMM show, and tons of other opportunities to make content. Many different vendors had set up these elaborate booths to feature all of their new gear, and we got exclusive access to talk with a lot of these companies and learn about their gear and what they have planned for the rest of the year. But this trip was a lot more than just the trade show. We had tons of different events that were planned by Sweetwater for us, the first of which was a big jam session in their silent rhythm room. Now, obviously what you're hearing is the final mixed audio, but if you're just standing in the room, it sounded a little more like this. So after a couple hours of filming and jamming, we then headed down to Studio A on the Sweetwater campus, which is by all definitions a state-of-the-art recording studio. It's really an incredible room. And there, we got to play Mike Mangini's drum set. And I know the comments are coming about jamming on these Zildjians, but none of us had the desire or even the nerve to start taking apart Mike Mangini's personal kit. So this was the setup that we gladly recorded on for this session, just as we found it, except for the snare drum. Now that recording project was actually hosted by the folks at Universal Audio, and they asked every drummer to do four quick takes, uh, each one tracked through an Apollo preamp, and for each take, they used a different combination of the Universal Audio analog emulators. So the take that you're about to hear now, which was my favorite, it uses an SSL 4000E channel strip that is sent to an SSL 4000G bus compressor, and finally through their Lexicon 224 reverb. And if all of that sounds like nonsense to you, don't sweat it, just listen to how good these drum sound.
We later got a chance to review all of these mixes at the Universal Audio booth, but more on that later. Now, I also wanted to mention that tons of vendors had awesome freebies and tote bags and souvenirs for us, but I think I can speak for everyone when I say that Universal Audio was the most generous, giving each of us a Volt 2, which is this sweet little two-channel interface that I'm actually recording through right now, and the Golden Reverberator guitar pedal, which I'm pumped to have here on my guitar setup at home. We then linked up with our host, Ryan, who gave us a tour of the actual Sweetwater store, which is just massive. And I'm sure everyone watching this video has been to a big box music store before, but touring the Sweetwater store is a totally different experience. And obviously one of the reasons that having the world's largest on-site inventory is so cool, especially if you live in Fort Wayne, Indiana, is that you can physically try any gear that you wanna buy before you buy it. Whether you're testing out near field monitors or trying out guitar pedals or testing handmade cymbals, you know, it's a lot easier to pull the trigger on your next gear purchase when you can actually touch and use and hear that exact piece of gear before you have to make the decision instead of just ordering online and hoping for the best, which is what most of us have to do most of the time. So we spent nearly two hours exploring the Sweetwater store and it was just an absolute blast. So once we finished up at the store, Ryan walked us around to some of the other areas within Sweetwater, not all of which were actually open to the public. Our first stop was the racquetball court, where this stunning performance took place. So to accommodate Sweetwater's 2,600 employees, there's a massive cafeteria and a coffee shop, which also happens to be open to the public. And for employees, there is a full-size gym, a doctor's office, a hair salon, like all these things that you just can't believe are actually in the building, but they totally are. So the scope of this building is just hard to describe because it's such a big campus. There's just surprises around every corner. So later that night, we all linked up in Casey's room to shoot a video idea that he had, where we all had to maintain a pattern on his practice kit setup while answering questions from all of the other drummers. A Pearl Masterworks, for sure, and something opposite of what I play now, so like beefy and fast. This session ended abruptly when our downstairs neighbors called us and asked us to stop. Kicked out. <laughs> Hello? I apologize, we're just uh, playing on a drum practice pad. We're all musicians. Okay, we, we can stop. Funny backstory here. During our stay at the hotel, there was actually a massive children's wheelchair soccer tournament that was taking place in Fort Wayne. And sure enough, our practice pad noise was disturbing one of the players below us. Sorry about that. Hope your game went okay. And I almost forgot, my wife Kelly and I snuck away just after our tour of Sweetwater and became fully initiated as Sweetwater guests by cruising down their infamous slide. So the following morning, it was time to hit all of the booths and we were not disappointed. Our first stop was the Pearl booth where I got to play for the first time uh, Pearl's President Series kit. Now I'll be the first to admit that this kit is not my personal style, but the tones coming off of the drum set were just so good and it was a blast to sit down and just play some fat rock grooves for a while.
Now a kit that is much more my style is the Session Studio Select, which I actually own in the Ice Oyster Blue finish, but I have to admit that this new green finish is absolutely my favorite. This like mellow ashy green with the wood grain showing through, it just looks incredible. And these birch mahogany shells were the exact ones that I used to help me, you know, make a decision on my final Masterworks kit behind me. Now we also took turns at the Pearl booth playing on this modified Pearl Midtown kit, which was linked up with the Pearl Mimic Pro module. The sounds inside of this kit, or the module rather, were just unbelievable. And by far some of the sickest ones were from uh, the Steven Slate 5 drum samples. They just sounded so good. Here's a few of my favorites. So after finishing up at the Pearl booth, we made our way around to some of the other vendors and there was tons of cool new gear to see. We spent a good amount of time with the folks from Shure Microphones and one of my favorite new pieces of gear from Shure was their brand new Beta 181, which is a mic pack or rather one microphone, but it comes with interchangeable mic capsules, something I personally never seen before. Thought that was really cool. I also got an extensive rundown of the new gear from Warm Audio, which is a company that's been on my radar for a while, uh, thanks to my buddy Eman Cervantes. Now Warm Audio has a lot of cool microphones that I think a lot of drummers are sleeping on. Specifically, their options for high quality overhead drum mics were just really, really impressive and I learned a ton from chatting with their rep for a while. Seriously, it's so impressive when you meet some of these reps who just come in as like the expert for the brand. They know so much stuff. If you ever find yourself at a trade show and really have time to pick the brain of one of the guys that are sent there, it's really incredible how much stuff they know. So I learned a ton chatting with the folks from Warm Audio. Then we made our way over to Focusrite and we got a full rundown of their new podcasting interface line, which is called the Vocaster. This is one of the most stripped down or simplified interfaces that I've ever seen. It was really user friendly and I was a huge fan of this new design. I also got a chance to toy around with the newest version of the Claret interface, the Claret Plus, uh, and that's actually the main interface that I use to track my drums here in the studio. Later that day, we made our way down to the Evans booth, which featured this cute little Yamaha kit outfitted with Evans' newest heads and cymbals. And yes, you heard that right, Evans' cymbals. Now, this entire setup is sold as the Evans DB1 cymbal and drum head pack. And I thought this was a really nice contribution to the quiet head slash quiet cymbal world. And I definitely would love to get my hands on one of these just for a late night practice setup. I thought they sounded incredible. So Gator Cases had this awesome booth idea where they basically set up a small boxing ring and you were able to take a baseball bat to any one of their cases. Of course, Casey and I both had to take a swing on one of the snare cases. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, I would say that if someone runs up and 
six baseball bats to your snare drum in this case. I think it'd be all right. Yeah. Which is a growing problem in the music community. Nice <laughs> baseball bat assaults on our instruments. It's the baseball bat vandalism. Yep. Yeah. We then headed over to the Universal Audio booth to review the mixes of the drums that we had tracked a few days earlier in Studio A, and it was so fun to not just hear these amazing drum mixes, but also to have the engineers talk us through what they did in the mix and how they were using their own UA gear and their plugins to achieve these sounds. Take a listen. And the transformers really create a nice sizzle and shimmy. Sure, sure. Definitely like just glossed over, but like a breathiness to, mm -hmm. to all of that high end. And it's mm -hmm. insanely clear. And for the high end for Neves, you know, on these just goes forever. Right. Really, you know. yeah. So this is the Helios mix. Okay. It's not like a oak, like a mahogany beef, like that sort of sound, but it does have like a you know, mid-low, there's such a sharpness to it. Really, really raw, for sure. Yeah. Roland was also there. We swung by their booth and checked out their new TD27KV, which is a killer sounding electronic kit. This was actually the same kit that I was jamming in the silent rhythm room on day one. And Roland also gave us each a pair of their V-Moda Crossfade 2 headphones with our custom logos engraved on the side. These things sound killer, and they were so comfortable that I used them for the entire flight home. But now that we're back in Orlando, my wife has officially claimed them as her own, so maybe I'll get a second pair one day. These are pretty cool headphones. What? Now one afternoon, Kelly and I and David and his friend Bryce snuck away to go see the infamous Fort Wayne's Children's Zoo. And I don't know why they call this a kid zoo, because it was definitely awesome for four adults. So we had an absolute blast checking this zoo out. I would definitely go back to this zoo next time we're in Fort Wayne. The following morning, we went to Sweetwater's Outdoor Pavilion to watch the rodeo games. And I would highly recommend you check out the link in the description to watch the full edit of this video on Sweetwater's channel. It featured Casey Cooper, Rob Scallon, Dovidas, and several other you know big YouTubers were in it. And it was just hilarious uh, to be there in person. And it was so fun to grab some B-roll of this. After the rodeo games, we got the full tour of the Dolby Atmos studio, which was one of the best sounding rooms I have ever heard. Essentially, you are surrounded by speakers inside of the Atmos studio, which can move parts of the mix around the room as they actually happen. So as you're listening to the song, the bass lines or the synthesizers or the drum parts, you know, they will just rotate around you in the room. And it was an insanely unique listening experience. Even playing songs that I've heard you know, over a hundred times before was incredible because you start hearing things that you've never heard inside of the mix before. I would play you some audio from this experience or from this room, but that would be just criminal because it wouldn't even kind of translate through this video. I just wanted to mention how cool that experience actually was. 
And to close out the day, we all met up to film a video for Zach Grooves. That involved us setting up an entire kit uh, right at the Sweetwater entrance, like literally in front of their giant sign. Um, and you should absolutely go watch that full video on Zach's channel. The edit turned out so funny, and this was just a really fun video to make for his channel. But here's a few clips from when we filmed that. So now we are back in Orlando, and in reflecting on this entire trip, I think the thing that stands out the most was Sweetwater's generosity. Not only did they fund this entire event, like flights, hotels, food, transportation, but they were also just incredible hosts. I can't tell you how many people would approach us on any given day and ask if we needed anything, or if they could do something for us, or if there was a part of the building that we wanted to see that no one had taken us on a, on a tour of yet, that kind of thing. The work environment inside of the building was just stellar, from janitors to security guards to chefs all the way up to the higher up guys that we met, like department managers. Everyone just had this distinctly positive energy to them. And I think that that speaks highly about Sweetwater as a company. Now, if you want to see even more awesome videos from this event that were made by the creators that attended it, uh, I'm going to put as many links in the description as possible. Definitely check those out. There was so much more that happened uh, that I didn't cover in this video, and I even have some more footage that'll be coming out soon, uh, specifically from GearFest 2022. Huge shout out to Casey Cooper, R. David R., Josh Crawford, Zach Graybeal, and of course, the entire Sweetwater team for making this such a truly killer week. It was an absolute blast. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Later.